Oh, we thought the goal that you most love from the best show reel in footy. I had a choice of two. I know I, I, I want to talk about them both, but I'm going to show one. The one when he jumps, jumps Sam Dwyer yeah. in the middle of MCG. And Sam Dwyer, he'd be wrapped. I mean, he played 20 odd games and he's been remembered being jumped over by Buddy. That's one of my faves, there's no doubt. But for the, for the moment, was the 2011 tight game. Yeah. You couldn't get the ball. He gathers his full belt, dubs it, turns on Taron, who was a gun, and puts it through. We're, we're lucky enough to, to be there that night, the noise. That, to me, was Franklin exuding all those qualities that we've all watched and all, we've all spoken about in the last couple of days. Speed, agility, balance, brilliance, magic outside of left foot and that imperious look at me. Yeah. No one had a look at me look like Lance Franklin did. Yeah. I, I really did. That was it. I think the ball went down the other end, I think Luke Ball. He did. For, for sure and certain you thought that was going to be the goal that propelled him to the grand final, but it wasn't to be. And, and he was box office all the way through and right until the end, as you rightfully yeah, wrote today. That. Yeah, what was yours? So, round 13, 2010, I've always felt that Franklin kicked the best two goals I've ever seen live six minutes apart. And the first is never replayed because the second was even better. So I want to relive the oh, first no, of those go. on the way to the second. This so is... four minute mark of the final term, this is a joy. followed by the 10 minute mark. And that he would pull the same trick twice in such devastating fashion. One he ran across the ground. <laughs> that, that's the equal of anything yeah. I felt in that moment. And then six <laughs> minutes later, he goes even better. It was absolutely uncanny. I remember vividly calling both of them. I remember the next day and all of the talk back that flowed. Yeah, just the yeah. sense of awe that he prompted. So he kicked the second one different. The first one he curled in on the slide and the next one he put through the air. Yeah. And which was, he could I'd bend the game to his will. I'd forgotten they were on the same night. Yep. Same, six minutes apart. People around the world would look at that footage, that second one, when Carl Hooker was chasing him, thinking, who is this man? To, to run that far, bouncing an oval ball, running flat out, and then kicking at an angle like that, the rest of the world would be thinking, what, who is this superhuman yeah, like that, That's the person. equal of any skill at the pinnacle of any game. Yes, yes. Um, and, yeah, we were... We should, I said, we should have a whole show <laughs> on Lance Franklin. Should get Dermot Brett and, and Jason Dunstall to put together a buddy show. We should just to oh, relive it, the like the Gary Ablett, the Gary oh, Ablett great season. All right. So it is great departure career. season. Yesterday, an icon of the game. Today, at the top of the agenda, a great out west. He's the game's record holder for West Coast. He's a premiership captain. He's been a stoic defender and a booming kick. Shannon Hearn is ready to embrace the end. Born to burn. Here he's now he can kick a long ball from 60 metres. Shannon Hearn, yes! Oh boy, welcome to the big league. I'd just like to announce the retiring from the AFL at the end of this season. It's just a wonderful game and I've just been so thankful to be able to play it for so long and to be here at West Coast. He does the right things at the right time and he just leads by example. I don't think you've seen him on Twitter or Instagram <laughs> later. <laughs> He's a man's man, you know, he's, he's the type of bloke you want to play under. It doesn't matter what stage of the game it is or what the scoreboard says, you can still challenge yourself to win the next contest and help your mate, and that's what I've always aimed to do. I think a reflection of the club is him. Earn wreaking havoc at half-back as always. There'll be guys who play for two or three years now, and you know, when, they're, when they're in their 40s, they're going to say, I played with Shannon Earn. They're the legacy players, you know, they're the club legends. Two games to go in his career. They'll both be at home in Perth. He's 35 years of age. It'll mean he finishes at 3.34 as long as he's fit for both. Two, only two players out of Western Australia in the AFL era have played more. They're David Mundy and Matthew Pavlich. So there's longevity in that. The travel factor is stitched into it. Mm. If you wanted to choose that, that was a great collection. So yeah, it was. uncompromising in the way that he played his footy and then he's the leader. He gets the signature moment to lead the Premiership of 2018. He was able to play all facets of the game. You know, we saw highlights of him jumping back into 
in the dangerous territory, which you have to play if you're a defender. You're going to get crunched at times. He was a pretty good one-on-one -on -one player. He, he, he's remembered a lot for his, for his great right foot. Now, he was more than that. He was a great... But he was one of the first people to really sort of pop him to the wing from, from full back. Yeah. He, 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 he was able to, to be an offensive defender. And he could... That extra 10 metres on his kick, it would send it over the back a little bit. Like, he can get it from half back and kick it over towards the 50 metre line. He was, uh, he was a super player. As, as, uh, he was made captain. And to hear Adam Simpson speak about him there, he's a legacy people, player and, you know, players will be able to say they play with, um, with him. I, I still don't know if the wide football world thinks of him as a great, but he is, he is a great. And he has a great place at that football club, doesn't he? He, he is quite rightly revered there for the list of accomplishments. Yeah. They, like, the games record holder right across the competition at their club holds a special place, I think especially when it comes out of the West. And to be, yeah, to be the man anointed to hold up that cup. So he led that generation of player. And that was after a period of, of trauma at West Coast around leadership and the like. And yeah, he was a, yeah. a calming cultural influence as well as defining their their defensive direction. So there were flashier players as McGovern was their star, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was. Australian Knight, he was the one who was there. But, but he, Hearn was their heart and soul. Yeah, someone said he made, he just, I think it was Jason Dunstan, he made right decisions. That's what he did. He was a really reliable defender who could turn defence into offence really, really quickly with that beautiful right foot he had. It's a big gap, isn't it, to have over Cox and Djakovic who... Uh, who the, the footy world over would bow down before. And this is the... So Adam Simpson has used the phrase legacy player a couple of times. So Josh Kennedy departed last year and yep. Shannon Hearn now. And this is part of... They've got to juggle the West Coast, is they need to become young rapidly. They've announced that as their intention and they've got a set of players that some they've made commitments to, some they have to make decisions mm -hmm. on. And obviously Gaff, Shui and Nat Nui are part of that. They've committed themselves to McGovern and Cripps and it seems like Darling and Yo and Sheed. So that critical mass of players that were the senior core now in the alarming drop-off and the necessity to become young quickly. It's interesting to just see how the next few weeks develop. There's a lot of observations from afar, Jared, about what they should do. And if we look at other teams who strip right back, like the Kangaroos, right back, Carlton, right back, do, do the Eagles want to do that? Or do they believe that, no, you've got to mesh some of the experienced players with the kids coming through? We're not going to wipe out and no, go the, the to the bottom. The raised earth has been a disaster. Yeah, I don't know if but it will be... there's something in the middle, isn't there? Yeah, we could put up a list and say, get rid of all of them. Get draft picks in, but I, I don't know if that's wise. I don't... I, yeah, so now that Hearn's gone, I, I, I think it's going to open the door. See, Nick Nat's contracted for next year and he wants to play on, so I presume he's going to play on unless the Eagles say, we don't want you. They could say that. Darling... It, Clubs want Darling. Do they want to trade him? Does he want to be a one-club player? So they've got decisions to make. It's the injury ones are the, the issues. Yeah, I mean, Liam Ryan's so name's rarely. come up now, Yeah, hasn't yeah, he? the Hawthorne connection there. The Hawthorne. I think he's a lot got, of clubs... He's got currency, yeah, though. So I think a lot of clubs will be chasing yeah. Liam Ryan. Not many of their senior players you could actually get much in, so you sort of have to make the decision whether you're winding them up free to a good home or you've got a role to play, whilst opening up enough spaces to populate mm. it with the young players that are needed.